Now from the night team, many of us have pets that are truly part of the family. And getting your pets groomed is supposed to be an easy thing, but that's not always the case. Team Trolls William Pitts takes us inside a darker side of grooming. Pets are family. Miko was only three years old, and he was my dog. Miko. He would sleep next to me on my pillow with my hand on top of him every night. Miko went off to the groomers. He never came out alive. He was kicked, he was slung around like he was a doll. And then he was put back on the table with his lead on, and he was choked to death. That groomer convicted of animal abuse, a different case in Phoenix. It was a family dog, I mean, raised him with our family. A Maltipoo named Max on his first appointment with a mobile groomer in Phoenix. Four hours later, no one had seen Max. And I looked in and saw Max hanging by his neck off the table. And at that point, I could tell that he was dead. The groomer passed out in the truck. He was such a part of our family. We want the awareness to be out there. Our investigators contacted 50 groomers. Four of them used those drying cages, and only one in five said their groomers were trained in first aid. We can't just say, well, our plan is that these things aren't gonna happen. We need to know that someone is there that can notice when a medical emergency is happening and sort of act accordingly. And if you're wondering why they're not trained, it's because most states don't require them to be. And in Arizona, the only question asked is your name and address and your plumbing information. So what can you do to keep your dog safe? First, if you have one of those smush-nosed dogs, they're more likely to be hurt from rough handling, stress, or overheating. And since most states don't require a license, do your own safety check on your groomer. Don't just trust them. And lastly, find out what they do if there's an emergency, if they're trained in first aid, or have someone who is. William Pitts, 12 News.